This message brought to you by Sambo and Honky. In this week's video, we'll be using science to figure out how much air remains trapped in your engine cooling system. There are lots of videos on YouTube showing you how to purge the air from your cooling system using tools like this or just burping it out of the top of the radiator cap, but nobody shows you how to measure how much air remains in the system. You know, you may think you've done a good job of getting all of the air out, but is this true? And so this video will help you answer this question. The general scientific principle that we're using is that with a gas at constant temperature, the pressure times the volume is approximately constant. So here you can see a picture of a cylinder with a piston on the top, and this is a, an ideal piston that has a perfect seal and it is weightless. And below the piston is a, a volume of the cylinder, and there's a volume uh, called V, and then there's a dashed line, and below it is a V, and that dashed line is just imaginary so that you can see the, uh, the entire volume below the piston is 2V. Now, an important thing to remember when working with pressures on planet Earth is that you're surrounded by an atmosphere, and at sea level, the pressure is 15 PSI. And so the pressure is 15 PSI, the volume is 2V, and so we have a pressure times volume of 30V PSI. And no, we don't, we don't actually need to say what V is, that's just a, a placeholder for a number that we'll figure out in the future. Now suppose the piston's surface area is 10 square inches and everything is at 15 PSI both inside and outside of the cylinder and then we add 150 pounds on top of the piston. That's a ba basically 15 PSI spread over the piston surface area. What happens next is that the piston will drop until the pressure inside is 15 PSI higher than it started out, and that will exactly balance the 15 PSI of weight that we added to the top. The resulting pressure times volume equation is then 1V times 30 PSI, which equals 30V PSI, which is exactly what we had on the prior page. Now suppose instead of a piston, we have an engine block with a volume of air trapped in the top, and we attach to it an air pump that just magically happens to have the exact same volume V. And now if we pump all of the air into the engine block, then the total volume decreases from 2V to 1V, and the pressure must increase from 15 PSI to 30 PSI total. And this brings us to a very important point to keep in mind. The gauge on your pump is only good at measuring pressure differences, not total pressures. So when the total pressure is 30 PSI, the gauge will only measure 15 PSI. So this means that the pressure doubles when the gauge pressure is 15 PSI, not when it's 30 PSI. Now suppose the volume of air trapped in the engine is much larger at 4V instead of 1V, and suppose you still have a 1V pump attached to it. How will you double the pressure? Well, just simply pump the pump four times and that will double your pressure because you'll have taken a total of 8V and turned it into 4V. So by now you're probably seeing a pattern here, which is that the amount of air that you must pump into the engine to double the pressure is the amount of air that was in the engine in the first place. So if you pump in a gallon of air to double the pressure, then that means there was a gallon of air in the system in the first place. So you could just sort of eyeball your pump and say, well, that pump looks like about a, uh, say a cup of air per pump, or you could actually measure it and be more precise. And here's a formula for how to figure out the, the volume of a cylindrical pump. And note that this is just an example. You know, you shouldn't uh, take this to heart as meaning this is the size of your pump. These are just numbers I pulled out of my ass. So anyway, the formula is one half times pi times the diameter squared times the stroke length all in inches, and in this example, we have 50 inches cubed. And we note that a gallon is 231 inches cubed, so uh, this is about one quart per pump. And I know that the volume of the pump shown in this picture is actually a lot smaller than a quart. So this just shows you the method about how to calculate the volume. It's, uh, like I said, it's not giving you the correct number. 
Anyway, this gives you the rule of thumb on how to figure out how much air is in your engine cooling system. Uh, just pump it up to uh, 15 PSI and the amount of air that you just pumped into the system is the same as the amount of air originally in the system. And that 15 PSI number is valid at sea level. If you're closer to a mile of elevation, for example, then the pressure is 12 PSI rather than 15. This message brought to you by Sambo and Honky.